Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometry problem. We have tangent alpha plus beta equals 7 and tangent alpha minus beta equals 5 and we're supposed to find tangent alpha. So, I'm going to be presenting two different methods here. Let's start with the first method. All right, so I'm going to be using the formulas for tangent of a sum and tangent of a difference. Tangent alpha plus beta can be written as tangent alpha plus tangent beta divided by one minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. And let's go ahead and set it equal to seven. Now, at this point, it might uh, be meaningful if we just use substitution, so let's say let tangent alpha equal one a and tangent beta equal b. Okay, so this gives us the following equation, a plus b divided by one minus ab equals seven. Let's go ahead and write down the second equation for tangent alpha minus beta. That is equivalent to tangent alpha minus tangent beta divided by one plus tangent alpha times tangent beta, and it's given as five. Again, using the same formula, we can write this as a minus b divided by one minus, one plus, I should say, ab equals five. So we now have two equations. We now have this one and this one, and we're going to turn this into a system of equations. And we're gonna solve that system and we're gonna find the solutions from there. So let's see how this works. I'm going to cross multiply uh, in the first one. That's gonna give me a plus b equals seven minus seven ab. And the second equation is gonna give me a minus b equals five plus five ab. Now, to solve this equation, we can uh, use substitution, but I don't think that's a very good idea. Like we can isolate B, write in terms of A, so on and so forth. That's one way to do it, but I'm going to be using a different approach. I'm going to use elimination. So let's go ahead and eliminate the AB term, multiply this by five and multiply the bottom one by seven. So seven times five is 35. So we're talking about the LCMs here. That's gonna give us five A plus five B equals, um, I should multiply everything by five. Okay, um, 35 minus 35 AB. By the way, let me just share you a quick anecdote. When I was doing these in high school uh, for the first time, I always forgot to multiply by the right hand side. So that was kind of like a bad habit that I will always get it wrong. Anyways, so now when you add these two equations, uh, 35 AB is gonna cancel out. And you're gonna get something nicer because at least you're not gonna have the product. So this is gonna give you 12a minus 2b, yay, I got it, 2b or not to be equals 70. And from here, we can divide everything by two, 6a minus b equals 35. And here it's very easy to isolate b. Let's go ahead and do it, write b as 6a minus 35. Great, so this is nice because we were able to express B in terms of A, but it's only after we eliminate the AB because without it, it will be more complicated. But it can be done, no big deal. Now, I wanna go ahead and do the same thing for the second one. Uh, I mean, not the second one, but kind of substitute this into the second one. That's what I was trying to say, I guess. So we have, or, or the first one, doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go ahead and work with the first one. So I'm going to substitute this into the first equation, which is a plus b equals seven minus seven ab. Let's rewrite it so we know what it, the original one is. Now I'll replace b with six a minus 35 on the left-hand side, as well as the right-hand side. And this is going to give you an equation in a, and it is going to be quadratic. Seven a minus 35 equals seven minus 42 a squared Okay, so what is seven times, 30? I think it's 245, is that right? Okay, that's a positive 245a, great. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and trying to keep everything positive, like a squared positive, I should say. So on the left-hand side, 42a squared. So we have seven minus 245, which should be negative 238, negative 238a. 
and then negative 35 minus 7 is going to make negative 42. Okay, now I got my quadratic, but one thing that will help a great deal here is to simplify this equation. And luckily, or it's been arranged before anyways, whatever you want to call that, we can actually divide both sides by something. Uh, but if you don't see it right away, let's go ahead and divide everything by 2 first. Okay, it may not be very clear to you first, but hopefully after division by 2, this will become more clear because that's when it became clear to me, sort of. Anyways, so now this is my equation and 119, well, I kind of know that it is 7 times 17, which means I can divide everything by 7 again. So it, basically, we divided both sides by 14 to keep a long story short. So this gives us um, 3a squared minus 17a minus 3 equals 0. Obviously, this is much nicer than this equation, right? This one is much, much better. So from here, we can uh, find the values of a by using the, you know, the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and find it. Um, from here, a is going to be negative b, which is 17, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 289, minus 4ac, but there's a negative sign, so double negative. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36. So that's 289 plus 36, whatever that is, we're going to find out, divided by 6. Okay, now 289 plus 36 um, should equal, let's see, 325, right, I think. Okay, uh, so we can write it as, let's see, let me double check that. Yeah, it's 325, 11 plus 25, what am I thinking about? Okay, so it's 325, and 325 can be written as, let's see. Well, 325, um, I don't think it's divisible by anything, but anyways, I'm just, I'll write it first, and then we'll try to figure it out. Okay, so, okay, so we have 325 inside the square root. Let's see if it's divisible by anything. I think it is. 325 is definitely divisible by 5, I know that, times 63, okay, there you go. It has 9 in it. Okay, cool. So it's 9 times 7, therefore, we can write this as 9 times 35, so 9 will go out, right? And let's double check, like 270 plus 44, okay, well, it's, wait a minute, uh, 270 plus uh, 45 is 315. How do we get the, oh, it is 65, never mind, it's not 63. Never mind. I'm like, what's going on here? Okay, 325 can be written as um, 65 times 5, not 63 times 5. And 65 obviously contains another 5, so we're still good. It's 5 times 13 times 5, so that's 25 times 13. Cool. Okay, great. It's still good, maybe even better. So now the square root of that number is going to, so you kind of see my thought process. I thought it was 63 times 5, but it, was, uh, it wasn't correct. Okay. So then we get 5 times root 13, right? Because the square root of 25 is 5. Okay, cool. And obviously 17 and 5 are not divisible by 6, so that's it for the values of a. Now for each value of a, we can go ahead and substitute, and we're going to be getting the value of b from here. Let's go ahead and do that. b is going to equal 6a minus 35, remember that. So if I take the positive value, it's kind of nice because Im imagine you're multiplying this whole thing by 6, that's going to get rid of the denominator. So it's kind of like when you multiply by 6, you're going to get this, right? That's kind of cool. And then you're going to subtract 35 from it. So the B values are going to be kind of like, um, let's see, 37 minus 35 is just going to be a negative 18. And uh, that's going to be plus minus 5 root 13. So that's kind of cool because I can keep the plus minus because I multiply by 6, get rid of the denominator. And then I'm just subtracting 35, and that is not going to change the radical. So it's kind of cool. So these are my a values, which is um, the value for tangent alpha. Okay, great. Notability. Thank you so much for this. Uh, tangent alpha, and this is my tangent beta value. Great. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Uh, what does the second method involve? And it's slightly different than what we did here. Well, maybe very different. Anyways. So for the first method, I mean for the second method, okay, let me rewrite these. Okay, the second method take takes advantage of the double angle formula. Okay, what am I talking about? Let me make it clear. Okay, nobility is playing games with me today. So x and y, okay, great. Uh, so if I add x and y, or in other words, like I should probably say this, 
Tangent x is 7, tangent y is 5. Actually, what is tangent x plus y? Why am I looking for that? You'll see in a little bit. Well, tangent x plus y can be found from here because it is tangent x plus tangent y divided by 1 minus tangent x times tangent y. Great. We use the sum formula again one more time. Okay, no big deal. So now this is 7 plus 5 divided by 1 minus 7 times 5, which is 35. So tangent x plus y can be written as 12 over um, negative 34, which should be simplified as negative 6 over 17. Okay, great. Now, here's one thing I want you to notice. x is alpha plus beta, y is alpha minus beta. So what is x plus y? x plus y is alpha plus beta plus alpha minus beta. Boom, you can cancel out the betas and you end up with two alpha. Yay, awesome. So this is tangent to alpha, which is equal to negative six over 17. Great. Now, remember my goal is to find tangent alpha and tangent beta from here, but finding the tangent alpha from tangent to alpha is fairly easy because all you have to do is use the double angle formula, which is two ten alpha divided by one minus tangent squared alpha and then set it equal to this one. And then when you distribute, let's go ahead and distribute, but we can kind of divide by two here and get a three. If you cross multiply, uh, you gotta keep the negative maybe with the three, how about that? Uh, let's see, I'm gonna multiply by negative three, so it's gonna give me a negative three plus three tangent squared alpha equals seven tangent alpha. And then this can be written as a quadratic. If I call tangent alpha A as before, I get 3a squared minus 7a minus 3 equals 0. And if you remember when we were solving for a and b, that is the exact same quadratic equation that we found. So the results are going to be the same, needless to go through this whole mess, but the answer is basically going to be the same thing. So this is my tangent alpha value, this is my tangent beta value, and this brings us to the end of this video. Sorry about the length of the video, I didn't want to keep it too long, but two methods, I had to explain things. Forgive me for that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.